Hey guys, welcome back to the Tukes and Tires YouTube channel. As always, I'm Zach, and this week we're getting this friggin' panel truck moving under its own power. So, here we go. Hey, is that Timmy's? Yeah, because we're in Canada. <laughs> okay, guys, so... You've probably already heard what we're getting to in this video, but if you haven't watched anything on this series, I will put the last video on the screen somewhere here. And uh, there is a playlist for this vehicle, for the uh, panel truck. But uh, you, last episode, you would have seen us, you know, get the body onto the new frame and get this motor kind of mocked up. But I don't know how much we're going to get done in this episode, but I'd really love to maybe get this thing fired up and possibly moving around on its own power. Because basically that's where we just want to get it to before winter, just so that, you know, we can move it around the yard easier and then, uh, you know, that's the main goal here. So what we got going on right now, what we're going to start with is we're going to try to get the front of this motor a little bit more situated. So obviously we just got her up on blocks and um, I got some stuff already pre-made up here. So we just got a plate for a motor. Where are you, Lacey? Making so much. You what? Nothing. There, there you are. What are you doing? Yeah, you're distracting the people or me. <laughs> but we got these plates made up, so you'd see what. What are you destroying over there? Uh, so we got some motor mounts in there mocked up. They're just like an LS conversion mount. I don't know. They were cheap, and I bought them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bolt these to those plates there and we're basically gonna make standoffs from the frame. So we're gonna use this like 3 uh, thick tube. Holy Toledo, Lacey. We're gonna use this tube and it's um, two by two. And basically we're just gonna bolt those plates in there and then I'm gonna take a measurement and then we're gonna see how much that measurement is. And then I'm gonna try to cut this and make it fit down in there. And we're gonna do that for both sides. So I'm gonna start making up these tubes. If Lacey would just get out of my friggin' way, holy, it's like you've had no attention all day. But uh, we're gonna get those made up and then we're gonna try to get them in there and then we can start making a tranny cross member. So here we go. Well, what are you doing? Okay guys, so I thought before we weld this one in, because we got this side made up, I'd show you kind of what we got going on here. The other side's a lot more simple just because it's straight. This side, just because of how centered I want to make it, well, that I made it, that uh, we had to do a little bit of scribing. So you can see in here how it kind of follows this angled taper here. So now all we're going to do is we're going to tack it to the top plate, and then we're going to take this out, fully weld it out on this plate, and then clean this up here, and then obviously get it welded in on the bottom. And then we'll move over to the other side and then uh, get that one made up so we can level out the motor in the frame and then the front mounts will be finished up. Pretty snazzy. Okay, so we got those bolted up in there and you would have seen from the little video I showed that I welded this side first and then we welded it to the frame and those are looking pretty sweet in there. We got the motor as level as possible in the frame, but now we're gonna start making that tranny cross member. So with trying to do this as cheaply as possible, what we're gonna be using is these two pieces of steel here. So we're gonna use this two by two steel that I had laying around. We're gonna use that for the cross member, but just so I don't have to make it off of this original S10 cross member, we're just gonna chop off this thing because the mount on the transmission only has one stud anyways. So it should work perfect. We'll be able to clean it up and weld it on. So we're gonna kind of get a little bit more situated here on what measurements I need. And then we'll come back once we've got her kind of set up so you guys can see what's going on. So it actually worked out to be a lot easier than we thought. So we ended up, we did cut that piece off the other mount and we just uh, slid it here so we wide it out a little bit because dad has another mount that we use just to mock it up. Uh, later on, we might do some uh, you know, little kickups here for exhaust or we might run the exhaust over top of this, but it's this seems like it's gonna work out so we're gonna try to get it underneath the truck and see if it fits. Okay guys, so the motor and tranny are now sitting there in there on its own weight. I'll see if I can snake myself under here so you guys can kind of see that training cross member. So, 
you can kind of see that's what we got going on under there. We are going to change it. I'm going to make it so it has a little bit of a drop. Um, there's lots of space above for the exhaust to run above. But I'm thinking maybe the angle of the transmission might not be okay. Uh, but for now, it's going to work just to get this thing moved around. So now that we got that situated, we're going to address our attention to a different area. So what I think the next plan of attack is, is let's try to get a steering column in this thing and possibly a brake booster and a gas pedal. Because the next thing to move it around is obviously we need those types of things. So we got this old column here that I'm going to try to make work. Um, the steering wheel has seen better days, but I kind of like it. And we also have the old brake booster and master. We might not use that master, but it's something. And I took the old pedal assembly out of that other truck. So we're going to see if we can make that work. So I'm going to see about trying to get that situated in there first. And uh, we'll come up or come back to once I kind of got it mocked up in there. And we're going to see if it's actually going to work or not. So here we go. Okay, so we kind of have everything just temporarily mocked up in here. Uh, we ended up modifying the brake bracket a little bit, so we just ended up cutting the gas pedal portion off because I'm just gonna remodify that to make it work up in here. And zip ties are your friend, so we have the steering column just kind of zip tied in place kind of to see where we want it. That's gonna have to get shortened because on this side, you can see how much sticks out, so we're gonna have to do something about that. That should be pretty easy. And then under here, hopefully you guys can see that. So we just got her all drilled out, drilled the four holes, and we just got some self tappers holding that up in there right now, just to show you guys. But uh, this is looking pretty good for placement. It goes beside the column pretty nicely. This we might have to shorten a little bit just to make it work a little bit better. But I think we're gonna try to toss the booster up in there and then uh, we might start messing around with a bracket that will come from the top of the dash to support that and the bottom of the dash so it'll kind of triangulate this whole uh you know unit we got going on here and then we're gonna start shortening the column so she's looking pretty sweet i'm digging it okay so we got the booster in there and we got it as straight as possible for now because we're going to be changing the firewall anyways so pretty much the hole over there doesn't matter too much. It's just that we get the bracket nice and straight where we want it. So we got that it's looking pretty sweet. And we've figured out how much we need to shorten off of this. So it's about three and a half inches. So we're gonna get this column out of the truck now and we're gonna try to shorten this. Don't know if it's gonna work or not, but we're gonna do our best to, uh, you know, deconstruct this thing and figure out how it works and how we can shorten it. Okay guys, so I don't know how much detail into the steering column I'm actually gonna get into with you guys because it's a little bit of a disclaimer that like, you know, do this kind of stuff at your own risk. I personally do not, uh, you know, I'm not telling you guys to do this. Uh, I don't want it to be a how-to on how to shorten your steering column. I'm doing it for myself. Uh, this main shaft on my steering column right here uh, we're not, you know, changing that in any form. It's just the outer um, housing itself that we're changing. So basically just a disclaimer of do this kind of stuff at your own risk. I'm not telling you to do it, uh, but I'm doing it. <laughs> but uh, just to show you guys a little bit what we got going on here. Uh, obviously we got the whole column torn apart. Probably never going to get it back together. But basically we're just going to be taking three and a half inches out of this outer tube and then this inner tube and this inner tube is just for the shifter it has nothing to do with the steering component itself but we're going to get this cut down and put back together and then uh, we're going to put it back in the truck so we can make a bracket to hold it so it will be back together once you guys see it after i'm done with it so i'm going to do that column is all back together and it is working beautifully so now you can see how much shaft we actually have hanging off the bottom. We are gonna cut it off here and we're going to put a universal joint on the bottom of this. But uh, for now, obviously we're just gonna leave it long. And the shifter actually works now because before the shifter didn't want to even move. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. 
But now we're going to get it tossed in the truck so I can kind of mock up for a bracket. And I'm going to show you guys the joints that I bought to uh, make this whole configuration work. So let's put her in there. Okay, guys, so got that column thrown in there. It's looking pretty sweet. And I made up just a little custom bracket. I know I didn't show making that, but it's just like a little clamshell style. So basically, it's got like two pieces of rubber that like sandwich in between metal in here to like hold the column in place. So that's pretty sturdy. And we're just reusing the factory little bracket at the bottom down there. Just got it self-tapped to the floor. So it's holding us all in place where we need to be right now. We got the body kind of bolted down to the frame. So it's kind of where we need it. So I'm gonna show you what I bought to, you know, make this all connect together. Uh, and you know, when we're talking about joints, I don't mean, hey, do you wanna hit off this joint? Like, come on, like, who do you think we are? But, uh, so we just got some uh, three quarter double D shaft and we got some universal joints and I did pay up for this stuff, but you know, when it comes to steering, and stuff like that you don't want to mess around because i mean especially with something custom like this if you're just replacing with factory stuff in your vehicle like that's perfectly fine but when we're doing something like this you know obviously i want to be able to steer and stop so don't mess around with that stuff guys so basically i bought a it's got a what do you want Lacey? yeah so we have like a weld on style uh three quarter inch and it's round but it go, then goes to a double D so that we can fasten to this. And then both of these are double D because for now what we're going to do is I know you can buy one to go on to here, uh, but I'm just going to grind another flat spot on this and then put it on that because like I said, we might be changing this anyways. So that's okay. So, but what we're going to do with this weld on one is I might weld it on down the road, but for now to make it easier to come in and out, we're just going to drill it and drill the shaft that we cut off here and put a grade eight heart like hardware in there just to bolt it for now. Um, so, you know, it doesn't fall off. So we got the body kind of where we need it to be. So we're just going to get all these joints in here, measure up a length for our shaft, and then uh, we might be able to steer this rig. So here we go. Well, would you look at that? That's looking pretty sweet. So we got that shaft all in there. We got it onto that factory steering box. Like I said, we might end up changing that. So we might reuse that joint and this rod should be long enough for whatever we have to change. If we do, you can see that how I said that we were gonna drill this here uh, just for now. I mean, it might end up staying, but that should be sturdy enough to hold that on there. Everything moves. So you should be able to see that moves back and forth. That's pretty sweet. And uh, I forgot to show you guys when we were doing this, but in these trucks, they have like a factory bracket like this that would originally hold like the e-brake and the uh, steering column here. But I ended up taking that out and I ended up making up this custom little bracket that goes to the top of that uh, brake bracket that we uh, reused from that like 2000 Silverado. And then it bolts to the bottom of the dash and then it bolts to the steering column and it makes the brake pedal nice and sturdy and the steering column. And then, uh, yeah, it, sh it should clear all the uh, wiper motor when we put all that stuff in there. And then you can see, I just put some like big plates in there to stiffen that up in there. But that's looking pretty sweet. So I think now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna see if we can find a drive shaft that's gonna be long enough to throw into this thing and then uh, possibly get some breakage going on here in a fuel system and we might see if this thing is gonna move. I don't know. Let's cross your fingers. Okay guys, so we got brakes on it now and I do not recommend doing this. This is just temporary, that's pretty ghetto. But uh, we got one brake on the passenger side. We were able to wrangle up enough stuff to do that. We got our good old trusty fuel bucket. So that's, you know, that's good. And for some strange reason, the key only wants to turn it on and not off. So we made it so you can take just, you know, disconnect the fuel. So that's good. So all that wiring's in there. It's looking pretty good. Um, what else did I do? Oh yeah, it's got a drive shaft in it. I don't know if I mentioned that, but uh, now we're gonna see if this thing uh, is gonna move under its own powers. All right, guys, we're gonna try to drive it for the first time. I don't know how it's gonna go because, you know, we don't have any power steering. We tried to make it work, but that thing just wasn't having it. So, yeah, 
Here we go. <laughs> oh. Okay, what do we got here? We got our fancy shifter right here. And we got the brake. All right. Oh, I guess it'd be good if we hook, hook the fuel up. Okay. Okay guys, well there we have it. We finally got this thing moving under its own power. That's pretty wicked. I'm pretty happy with this. Um, you know, you can't complain when the thing's mostly been free. We'll probably do, you know, once this build is complete, we'll do a whole breakdown of what it cost me to do this. But right now with, you know, everything basically, I only have about 300 bucks into it, you know, like selling stuff and buying stuff. So that's pretty cool. But, uh, I don't know how much more we're gonna see this thing this year. Uh, maybe if I can find a front end for it, we might show that and stuff like that, but I don't know how much more we're actually gonna show of this thing right now. Obviously it's gonna come back, but we got other things we gotta do this year. But uh, all right guys, well, I think that's gonna be it for now. I really appreciate all you guys watching and subscribing. You guys are the best, but as always, don't forget to salute the beaver. Hey.